I, I just know that the future needs to be about building cultures of respect mm -hmm. and where staff feels genuinely valued because when they do, great things can happen. Welcome to the Good Enough Mompreneur Podcast. I'm your host, Angela Mishuli. Thank you for joining me on this episode of the podcast where I talk to Bonnie Lowe Craman, the founder and CEO of Ultimate Assistant Training Consultant. For 25 years, Bonnie worked as the personal assistant to Oscar winner Olympia Dukakis and co-founded New York Celebrity Assistance. She is a TEDx speaker and the author of Staff Matters, People-Focused Solutions for the Ultimate New Workplace. And I cannot wait to bring you my conversation with Bonnie in this episode. We talk about things like, what is it to be a manager versus a leader? We talk about the unique qualities that women and moms bring to the workplace. We talk about ways in which women can gain confidence and lead from every position that they hold in the workplace, the importance of thoughtfully hiring and retaining staff for those who are listening and who are building their businesses or will one day be there as you're scaling. And then also one of the more important topics that we talk about is how much strong communication is the foundation of a happy workplace environment. I, I just love this conversation so much. And Bonnie is just such a wealth of knowledge and information. And it's such a critical time that we have this conversation. But before I share my interview with Bonnie with you, I want to invite you to leave the podcast a review. If you're enjoying our content, it really helps us know. And then it also helps other mompreneurs find the podcast. Then be sure to subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss one interview or episode that we share that's going to help you learn something, that's going to help you have that mindset shift that who knows how it could help you expand in your life or in your business. And then to if you know somebody who could benefit from this podcast episode, please share the episode with them. So without further ado, here is my interview with the lovely Bonnie Lou Craman. Hi, Bonnie. Welcome to the podcast. I am thrilled to talk to you. What you're doing is so important. And I'm going to give you a little introduction. Yes, it sure. is so important. Um, so you are a TEDx speaker. You're an educator, an expert at bridging the gap between leadership and staff. And I cannot wait to dive in and talk about your new book, Staff Matters, People-Focused Solutions for the Ultimate New Workplace. I and thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it so much, Angela. Um, we certainly have a lot of similar concerns for the workplace, don't we? We do. We do. And I think take a pen and paper, take notes <laughs> on this episode for sure. So why don't you give listeners a little bit of background about your esteemed career prior to what you're doing now you're doing and a little insight into what you're doing. Now. Sure. Yeah. Um, let me first say nothing about my career has been planned. <laughs> I graduated from Rutgers University in New Jersey, where I'm from, with a degree in theater and English. And I had a dream of being an actress, which lasted for about five minutes um, when I realized being on stage was not going to be my my uh, life. But being behind the scenes in the theater and in show business was. I ended up working as the personal assistant to the actress Olympia Dukakis for 25 years. Mm -hmm. And 
in a million years, I never thought that my work with her would last that long. She, you know, for movie buffs out there, she won an Oscar for the film Moonstruck with Cher. And she also did Steel Magnolias and Mr. Holland's Opus and a, and a slew of other films. Um, and I also didn't predict that interest in working as a high level assistant would be of interest to people all over the world. But I began getting at being asked to speak and teach. And at this point, I've been in 13 countries teaching and speaking. I, mm -hmm. I wrote my first book called Be the Ultimate Assistant from my work with Olympia. And then in the work I was doing traveling, I was meeting so many assistants, but also their executives. And I was talking to HR professionals and I was talking with recruiters and I became so aware of of what was broken in the workplace mm -hmm. and not only in the United States, but all over the world. And so I started taking notes and a lot of notes. So that led to the second book called Staff Matters, which just came out in February. And um, it is a compilation of over 1500 interviews with, with people. Um, and in this post pandemic world and workplace, it is imperative in my view that we get a handle on what this new workplace is because it there's a lot about it that doesn't resemble what we all remember from February of 2020. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And like we were talking before we started recording, I've had the chance to read your book and it does just what you say that you do. It bridges the gap between staff and HR and leadership mm -hmm. and management. And it, I, I was so impacted by it and thought, I wish I would have had this decades ago, quite honestly. Uh, so, <laughs> me too. I, I me too. Yeah. You, you know, as I was writing, you know, publishing type would ask me, so who is this book for, Bonnie? Mm -hmm. And, you know, they kept wanting me to say, well, it's just for the leaders. And it's really not. That's why it's 400 pages. It's mm -hmm. for leaders and assistants Absolutely. and HR professionals and recruiters. If we agree that there are aspects of the workplace that are broken, mm -hmm. then no one of those groups alone is going to be able to fix it, mm -hmm. you know? That in this mm -hmm. new workplace, we are going to have to collaborate with one another. Mm -hmm. you know, because one of the things I became very aware of is that there's a lot of fear in the workplace among the staff. They, they would say literally to me, Bonnie, I have a front row seat for everything that's happening at my company. I see mm -hmm. and hear everything, but I can't speak up. I'm afraid. I'm afraid I'm going to get fired. I'm afraid I'm going to be labeled a troublemaker. I'm afraid I'm not going to be liked. I'm afraid, mm -hmm. you know, so much fear and a lot of fear among women, mm -hmm. but there's also fear among men. And therefore, if we believe that there's all this fear, then, then it's very concerning to me. Then that means that leaders do not have all the information that they need to have in order to make these big decisions that they're making. Mm -hmm. They're making them without full information because their staff is too afraid to tell them the full truth. Right. And, and that is frightening, mm -hmm. my friends. And, and I decided I'm not afraid. And so mm -hmm. I'm going to pull the curtain back on what's really happening through the stories, real stories of real people. So, you know, whether it's bullying, sexual harassment, racism, discrimination, the wage gap, the money issues, I decided I'm going for it. So that's what I did. And I'm so delighted that you found the material compelling. A hundred percent. And I love to all the examples that you include, like what happens when you don't ask your staff before you make a big decision? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just doing a little forethought and thinking about what, who are, who's going to be impacted by the decision that you're making? And right. <laughs> I rarely, perhaps this happened in your work, you know, mm -hmm. in, in law, mm -hmm. there is no staff or I've ever met who does, can't relate to the notion of, have you ever worked in a situation where the leaders were, went ahead and made a big decision that directly impacted you. <laughs> 
and you were never asked. Mm -hmm. You know, the assistant who gets a text message on a Friday Mm -hmm. and she's already supporting four executives and HR is telling her in a text message, oh, on Monday, you'll have a fifth executive to support. Mm -hmm. And she's like, what? You know, there's a, there are a lot, that's a big step being missed. That's why chapter four is called ask first. Right. Right. And a lot of people talk to me about that chapter. (laughs) I love it. It's, I mean, you, you mentioned how, how important it is right now on the end of the pandemic, how much the workplace has changed. So, you know, so many of my listeners are either in the workplace or looking to create their own new workplace. So I think the information that you have to help us prepare and handle that and do better ourselves is so important. So nobody starts a business to manage people (laughs) here. You know, they, they have in mind, you know, usually financial goals or what the impact they want to have, but it really does start at the foundation. So we have to learn how to manage people and lead in order to grow, to reach those goals. So I know you're going to help us do that more purposefully. (laughs) So I think a really important place to start is the difference between managing and leading. Because if you consciously haven't considered what that is, Mm. you can immediately take some missteps. (laughs) Yeah, Many people interchange those words, Mm -hmm. manager and leader. I'm a big fan of the notion that everyone on a staff is a leader and can lead from whatever role they have in the company. And I wrote an article recently called The Three V's of Leadership. Now, in the introduction of the book, I talk about how in business schools, there is two few courses that actually have a name like manage people how <laughs> you know how to get the best out of your staff yet we call the staff the backbone of the company you know <laughs> the right arms or the face of the culture they're very important you know leaders mm-hmm. wouldn't have to hire anybody if if they could do it all themselves so mm-hmm. let's just start there so um in this new workplace Mm -hmm. So many, much of the workforce is working remotely and Mm -hmm. hybrid, and we're communicating by webcam. There was an article today that said the new skill for 2023 is eye contact into the camera. (laughs) Like, okay, new skill. We've been past the pandemic since 2020, and we're just now learning how to look (laughs) into a webcam to to make it seem like we're looking you right in the face (laughs) because humans are meant to be with humans. So when we think of leadership, we we hire people because we have a need, and then it's about how do we retain them? How do we nurture them? And I boiled it down to the three Vs, which are, first one is be visible, show up, which in some cases means turn on your webcam and be seen, be with your staff, the people you hire, they need to see you. This environment in the workplace today is very stressful and filled with anxiety. Um, And staff needs to see the leader. We all hear everything, you know, comes from the top. Well, we need to have leaders who are visible. The second V is be verbal. We need leaders to talk to us that Mm -hmm. our imaginations can go wild. I have an assistant for 12 years Jen and I, and we make sure to talk with each other so that I understand what's going on with her. Even though she's in New Jersey, I'm here in Florida. It's imperative that we be visible with each other, that we be verbal with each other. And then the third V is vulnerability, Mm -hmm. is that we need our leaders and wherever you fall in the organization, you can be vulnerable we need to share with each other what's going on that will impact the work that, you know, hey, guys, I'm handling a sick child today. 
but I'll make sure to hit that deadline that you all need. Or can someone back me up? Um, it's a whole new workplace that many people were unprepared for. This was unprecedented, but it it really goes a long way to be visible, verbal, and vulnerable. So when, vulnerability can mean a leader admitting that he or she doesn't have all the answers. I mean, a, one thing the, during the pandemic, I had to have an honest conversation with Jen and say, you see what's happening with the business. It's We're not as busy. I don't know when I can give you a next raise. Mm -hmm. And so we had an honest, transparent conversation about it. Therefore, she didn't have to be sitting in New Jersey worrying, am I getting fired? Am I going to lose my job? But we were able to have an open and honest, it was a little hard, but at least knowing is better than not knowing. Oh, sure. So share that as a solid example of how leaders, leaders need to have some empathy here and, and remember what it was like working for somebody else. And and to really get that when you're alone in your house and you're only communicating on a webcam daily and you have all these emails, your imagination can go a little crazy. Yes? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that's the short answer on that one. Yes. And I've learned that women, the way our brains are made, that we use our prefrontal cortex, which tends to lead us to more like catastrophication and and going on about all the different scenarios so I love yeah. that you just emphasize communication and I love that you emphasize leaders not having all of the answers because none right. of us do and I think that that's one yeah. of the things that really trips leadership up yes Mm -hmm. And that's not necessarily what someone wants from you in a leadership position. <laughs> no, we're looking for authenticity, right? We're, lo we're looking for, for, we want to be treated like adults. Mm -hmm. We want to have someone be a straight shooter with us. Mm -hmm. If you're telling me I have to show up in the office three days a week. Okay. Just tell me why. Mm -hmm. Just give me a cogent reason why. And if I show up, can I be certain that the rules are being applied fairly so that mm -hmm. everybody is going to follow those rules and they're not being applied unfairly? Mm -hmm. You know, if leaders think that staff doesn't know the truth about, you know, if there's unfair, unfair pay practices mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. just things being unfair, mm -hmm. that is a formula for having somebody feel well. They obviously don't care about me. So why should I care about them? Mm -hmm. And, you know, leaders need to be very aware that to listen to the silence, because, you know, I spoke earlier about there's a lot of fear. And mm -hmm. when people are afraid, they're usually quiet. They're not mm -hmm. being verbal because mm -hmm. they're worried about repercussions and ramifications and all of backlash. So some leaders have said to me, well, Bonnie, if nobody's complaining, I think there's no problem. Well, that may be true. But what also may be true is that they need to take a closer look at who's not talking mm -hmm. and then find out, make it your business about why not. Mm -hmm. Actually, I've said straight out to Jen, the only thing that would ever get me upset is if you felt like it. I needed to know something and you chose not to tell me, mm -hmm. you know, like we all have to be grownups here mm -hmm. be adults. Yes. and it was hard enough having difficult conversations pre pandemic when we were all in rooms together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would, and I would argue that it's more difficult now to mm -hmm. do it in this kind of manufactured way, mm -hmm. you know, through machinery, mm -hmm. not so easy to do. Mm -hmm. No, I know a lot of people when the pandemic happened, I had been working remotely for a decade. So I was like, okay, whatever. <laughs> but you just went I'm, with it. Right. And I know a lot of people really struggled for with that 
because of that reason. It, it sure. wasn't just, okay, now I do my job at home. There is a whole myriad of new skills and new ways of thinking that goes along with it, but it can be overcome for sure. And I think communication is really key in that. Yeah. And um, I speak with a lot of leaders and assistants and there's one company, you know, now we're here in 2023, there's one company that's fully remote, but what they commit to do is they they choose the, together they collaborate on a, a date and a city mm-hmm. and the company pays to fly the team, you know, the marketing team, mm-hmm. the sales team to once a quarter, once wow. a quarter, they actually get together in a room together because they feel it is that important. And mm-hmm. I applaud that effort. Mm-hmm. And I love the fact that they come mm-hmm. together as a team and they decide together what the dates are mm-hmm. and what city makes the most sense mm-hmm. for somebody, as opposed to the leader making that decision without asking first. <laughs> right. And scheduling it on the first day of school when all the parents cannot yeah. be there. or <laughs> Exactly. And, you know, making this arbitrary decision right. and not taking into consideration Right. You know, well, actually my surgery is on that date or right. my friend's getting married on that day. You know, right. if I you was, want people yep. to show up, you should ask them if they're yes. available. Yes. I was talking to somebody about a deadline and they were like, why did somebody set this deadline in May? Don't they know it's crazy for moms? We have all of these things going on with the end of the school year. Why is this happening now? <laughs> and it's true. And I was like, oh. You know, for for lots of people, they don't realize that it is a an intense time of the year that's almost like Christmas. <laughs> so that's why you ask, right? I mean, I mm-hmm. made, but you know, we all make mistakes. We all do missteps. Mm-hmm. I once scheduled recently scheduled a class that I was going to teach, and it was the week before college, most college graduations. So, you know, what happens? I didn't have a big turnout because the women who were, who would love to come to the class, they were consumed with the graduation of their children. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Like you can't, you don't want to compete with that. You don't want to. It's, um, yeah. And so there's so much to be done Mm -hmm. to remedy this, Mm -hmm. uh, when I published my book, I really loved the fact that a few of the companies I chose for marketing and publishing were women owned businesses, Mm -hmm. you know, moms working with other moms. And so there was a real sense of support and Mm -hmm. camaraderie Mm -hmm. because they were all on that same page mental mentality wise. And I, as a client Mm -hmm. did not feel that anything suffered and I often remember working with Olympia Dukakis, who has three children, who had has three children. Mm-hmm. And when I first went to work with her and I was pregnant with my son, Adam, who's now 35, mm-hmm. I said, is it possible to be, how can I be a great mom and a great worker? And she said, Bonnie, she didn't hesitate. She said, Bonnie, I'd rather have working moms working for me than anybody else. They're forced to be so organized. Mm -hmm. forced to it's just a given and I think that's the most underrated quality of Mm -hmm. mompreneurs Mm -hmm. and that was (laughs) there's a need right um among us right and I love that you mentioned that because I was going to ask you when it comes to leadership you know oftentimes we have a model of leadership that may not be authentic to women and especially right. moms so could you talk for a minute about some of the unique leadership qualities that moms and women bring to the workplace and business that we might be underestimating or not giving ourselves enough credit for, especially right now in the workplace. Right. I mean, women often undervalue some of these skills and talents. Mm-hmm. And and of course, for top of the list is very high EQ, mm-hmm. that women are, are hardwired in mm-hmm. general to 
have high emotional intelligence, mm -hmm. that we can read body language. We have intuition. Mm -hmm. There is a reason why it's called women's intuition. Mm -hmm. uh, and there is a, a nurturing aspect mm -hmm. of, of women so that when we are in groups, mm -hmm. we have a sensitivity to what people are feeling and thinking Now, sometimes we're right, but also sometimes we're wrong. So mm -hmm. where we could do better is when there's a misstep, uh, you know, because there's a whole thing about how we're socialized mm -hmm. and the, the, we need to be very mindful about not getting defensive over mm -hmm. these things, mainly because the world is moving so fast mm -hmm. and there, there could be a tendency to step on feelings. Mm -hmm. uh, but in general, women are very good at, mm -hmm. at um, reading other mm -hmm. people and moods. And is this a good time? And, and just the consent tone on the phone or on a zoom mm -hmm. call also very, very organized. Most mm -hmm. moms are extremely organized mm -hmm. uh, and that is, that's a real benefit because it, it's proven that mm -hmm. women are better at managing the 20 balls up in the air. You know, like, you know, where the kids are, you know, where the parents are, you know, you know, you have mm -hmm. a lot of different moving parts. And when the 21st ball gets added to your plate, mm -hmm. most mm -hmm. moms don't freak. Like they're, they're able to say not not just not be terribly flustered by it just like okay mm -hmm. how does that get incorporated um men are not as great at managing all those balls mm -hmm. yeah in reading your book I realized something that I hadn't given myself credit for in that uh, I have neurodivergent family members that I've had to advocate for and I was the one that kind of put my finger on issues when it was obvious to nobody else, but I never gave myself credit for that advocacy or being the interpreter for what's really going on when somebody perceives their behavior in a different yeah. way. Or so that's something that in your book, I was like, I never thought about. <laughs> Did anyone push back on you when you revealed that truth? Oh, that was oh yeah. Oh, for sure. Right. So sometimes I think to myself, huh, if Angela had been Angelo, uh -huh. would it have would you have been taken more seriously? Oh yes, uh, I think so. You think so? <laughs> and here's the thing for women, I'm so glad mm -hmm. you brought up that example. Mm -hmm. I think most women can relate to the to that situation where mm -hmm. you know something that mm -hmm. others don't know. Mm -hmm. And when you present it, there is some pushback. Mm -hmm. I think the real test for women, mm -hmm. I'm getting goosebumps right now, <laughs> is to hold firm right. when you know you're right mm -hmm. and to not doubt yourself in that, mm -hmm. in those moments. Mm -hmm. And honestly, more times than I can count, mm -hmm. it's come true where mm -hmm. eventually in a bit more time, then people mm -hmm. start coming around. But it does require courage mm -hmm. to stand your ground and and to just say no. You're mm -hmm. that that really is happening. That mm -hmm. that he he or she is neurodivergent, and mm -hmm. I've done the research, and mm -hmm. you know I have several examples from my own life, and mm -hmm. so many women do. But we right. get pushback, and it's it's unfortunate. There's a double standard. Mm -hmm. If we oftentimes, if we were a man, mm -hmm. our our point of view would be taken more seriously faster. Right. Or we often discount like we don't have a degree or MD after our name or something like that. We think of all the reasons why maybe it's legitimate that our intuition is discounted, but that doesn't matter quite honestly. <laughs> it no. And in fact, you know, the trend had been pre pandemic mm -hmm. in so many job descriptions mm -hmm that there would be an arbitrary bullet that said bachelor's degree required. Mm -hmm. And now in the heels of the great resignation and mm -hmm. all the upheaval in the workforce, guess what? Mm -hmm. That bullet has magically changed into <laughs> bachelor's degree preferred. Right. 
Right. So it's, that's the reality. And so women do, do not, not apply just because you don't have the degree. Right. Absolutely. Mompreneurs, I wanted to interrupt our conversation for a quick minute to introduce you to our newest sponsor. Did you know that you can increase your revenue by 20% by simply having consistent branding for your business? One easy way to stay consistent in your branding is by using social media and business resource templates. The template packs by Tiffany Co. Design Studio are intentionally designed to keep your branding cohesive and are simple to customize to your brand. Save hours of time on content creation and look professional by using templates. Find templates by visiting tiffanycodesignstudio.com and use Good Enough Mom to get 20% off any template pack. Okay. Now let's get back to the conversation with Bonnie Lou Crayman. So what are some of the points that you think if we're, you say we can be leaders in any position, which I wholeheartedly agree with mm-hmm. that we need to spread that message because we don't need to be in the C-suite. We don't need to be um, no. the business owner to be the leader. So how can we implement leadership in our everyday life and all that we do? What are some of the things that we can incorporate? Um, My, my best advice here is to be um, very clear on a daily basis about why you do what you do in the assistant world. For example, Many assistants are asked, so you're an assistant, what do you really want to do? And there's an assumption that the role they possess is not good enough or not high enough. And for women, especially, I think it is, if you're managing a family and your work, Mm -hmm. we tend to get guilty over not doing the mom thing well or not doing the work thing well and you mm-hmm. know trying to straddle these worlds it is and the older i've gotten the more clear i've gotten on this idea which is to every day just check in with yourself about why you're doing what you are doing mm-hmm. there're always going to be the haters out there there're mm-hmm. going to be going to be people looking at your life through their lens Mm-hmm. with envy with um with judgment mm-hmm. and it's simply because they're thinking about well i could never do what you're doing mm-hmm. and and that's about them that's not about you so mm-hmm. in terms of leading in a, on a daily basis when you see women who are really killing it and doing mm-hmm. well um say so we need to take a page out of the guy's books in my view Mm -hmm. uh Mm -hmm. for example when it was on an airplane with a female pilot Mm -hmm. and and at the end of the flight she was at the cockpit you know uh, saying goodbye to the passengers Mm -hmm. and i saw her and she was just standing there looking very proud and very official and Mm -hmm. i said excuse me were you our pilot and she said, yes, I was. And I said, thank you. It's so wonderful to see a female pilot. Congratulations. And just thank you for doing what you do. And she was very moved by that and and taken by that. Um, in the workplace, we have female leaders who have fought really hard to get to where they are, right? Mm-hmm. And they feel lonely because yeah. they're surrounded in a large part by men. They're, you know, there's more women in leadership positions, but still it's dominated by men. So what I say to staff, people on staff, when they see and truly admire men and women, but especially a female leader who, you know, just initiated something wonderful for the company, find a way to say so and send an email, send you know, find her in the hallway, send her, you know, get on in a team meeting, you know, be the one to say, Angela, I just 
before we start the meeting, I just want to let everybody know that I just think your hard work is really paying off and all of us are benefiting from it. Mm -hmm. That is how we're going to, that's what a leader does. Mm -hmm. A great leader builds up other leaders. We elevate others that we keep learning and get elevated. And then we reach back and bring others with us. And in my view, women need to do that a lot more for other women. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. I, I mean, yes, that is a very important message. I don't know how many women I've had on my podcast, including yourself, who do what they do and you just kind of go through the motions and you don't realize, you know, you're doing really important things. And I make a point of saying that. And I've yes. had guests just be like, really? And I'm like, Yes, you are. Yes, we need to reflect <laughs> on each other's success. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, that And that's a short sentence, but it means mm -hmm. so much mm -hmm. because we all want to know how we're doing. And mm -hmm. so many women I talk to, perhaps in your work as well, mm -hmm. they've, they've been burned. They've been yes. damaged in some mm -hmm. way that they have been demeaned and diminished yep. by something or someone, mm -hmm. the system. And, you know, it, it's hard for women in general, but mm -hmm. especially for women of color mm -hmm. as well, mm -hmm. that, you know, many women have said to me that of color, the, who they, they feel that they have to work three times harder mm -hmm. than other people in mm -hmm. order to be taken seriously and to be mm -hmm. considered for promotion, et cetera. That is that's exhausting, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, uh, you know, many women understand the dynamic in a meeting of being interrupted. Mm -hmm. Women get interrupted more than men do. Um, we have had the experience of sharing an idea and then not having it go anywhere, but then a man mm -hmm. takes the idea. And when he reveals it, everybody's like, Oh, George, what a fabulous idea. We have to do that. Mm -hmm. So my advice for women in that situation mm -hmm. doing this is to say, um, George, that's so great that you loved Jill's idea that she was sharing a mm -hmm. few minutes ago. Maybe the two of you can work together on that. Mm -hmm. You know, like we have to support each other and call out mm -hmm. in diplomatic ways. We don't want to make people feel bad and mm -hmm. partially it's about the socialization that we've all mm -hmm. had. It's hard to undo something that's been ingrained, deeply mm -hmm. ingrained for a really long time. Mm -hmm. But try, we must. <laughs> and yes. And when we get interrupted to say, it's like, John, I wasn't quite finished with what I was saying. Um, I'd love to finish my thought. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, or have you, Angela, say, well, you know, Bonnie, could you finish what you started to say before? Because I was really interested in where you were going with that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, would you agree? Like, we can mm -hmm. we can do that mm -hmm. in, in, when we're when we can rely on the facts of it, and mm -hmm. we can do it without make making people feel that. Mm -hmm. Exactly, it's so important. And again, it gets back to the whole point where we kind of we incorporate we make leadership too complicated. Great leadership can mm. be as simple as giving someone else credit or supporting somebody else's yes. success. Um, so I love that message. But yes. sometimes we find ourselves, you talked about, you know, us being ingrained and, and conditioned to not realize what we skills we have or abilities yes. to value. So can you talk a bit about how we can find confidence to kind of uh, raise our hand or speak up in a way that maybe we haven't before? Right. It, <laughs> it's, a, it's a continuation of what we were just talking about. Mm -hmm. um, I believe confidence is a team sport mm -hmm. and that it comes from exerting your why, doing the work. Mm -hmm. That you, there are going to be judges out there. 
So it's about not worrying about what the competition is doing. Worry Mm -hmm. about what you're doing Mm -hmm. and do the very best job you can each and every day. Hopefully you will receive those emails and those Mm -hmm. messages on LinkedIn saying that article you wrote really meant a lot to me Mm -hmm. or that advice you gave me on getting a raise. Mm -hmm. It actually worked. Mm -hmm. I mean, I got an email last week that blew me away that (laughs) someone I hadn't talked to in seven years Mm -hmm. said, had, had to tell you, used your advice about the the salary. And I increased my salary by $40,000. And I mean, of course, that's a huge amount of money. But what that told me was Mm -hmm. she'd been underpaid for years. Mm -hmm. Finally, there was an acknowledgement of what she needed to make. Mm -hmm. So Confidence comes from authentically doing the work that you want to do mm-hmm. and and having the the results mm-hmm. be what you envisioned. Mm-hmm. You know, to to get a reflection of that in a meeting, um, or you know, someone refers someone to you. Mm-hmm. You know, um, you get an email and says from someone you didn't know, you mm-hmm. don't know, who says, you know, I I was at a meeting and so-and-so was talking about you and said, I really must connect with you because you're really interested in blah, blah, blah. As many people as we touch on our mm-hmm. day in our daily basis, my own theory is that we have touched three times more mm-hmm. than those people we actually know about. Mm-hmm. And so confidence comes from doing the work you really want to do mm-hmm. and then having your son or daughter come to you and feedback something that you taught them two years ago or mm-hmm. hear your own words coming back at you. Mm-hmm. You know, confidence comes from a variety of different ways, but it, it, it's fact-based. Mm-hmm. Um you know, I had an assistant tell me she was suffering from imposter syndrome, but yet she had a track record managing teams. Mm-hmm. And I said, I'd love for you to, you know, just talk me through a few actual strategies that you used with those teams. What did you do with them? What mm-hmm. did you get together with them? Did you have, how did you manage team meetings? And she started like, bam, 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 bam. I'm like, mm-hmm. there it is. Mm-hmm. It, this is, this is authentic, real life strategies. You put that mm-hmm. on paper mm-hmm. and you could look at that piece of paper and say, I did that. I right. like it. It's the truth. Mm-hmm. Women in general, if we can rely on the truth, we mm-hmm. can look at it and say, that is my job description. I really mm-hmm. do do that. I can look at my resume. I, yes, I've done all those things. Mm-hmm. That's how confidence is built. And then on top of that, if we have other women validating those things Mm -hmm. and on LinkedIn, say, we comment on each other and Mm -hmm. say, the work you're doing is really important. Mm -hmm. I'm proud to know you. Mm -hmm. You know, those kinds of words, women, unfortunately, do not hear them as much as we need to hear them. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's what I think about confidence. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, A wise female CEO said to me that confidence is earned, but I don't think we always know when we're earning it. So maybe complimenting and helping other people see it helps them realize they're earning it. (laughs) Oh my gosh. A hundred percent. We need to be Mm -hmm. overt. and mm-hmm. intentional about it. Mm-hmm. I saw, I was in New York City and there was a, a beautiful woman sitting at the bar and she had this amazing dress on and she just looked incredible. She was sitting alone having mm-hmm. a drink. Mm-hmm. And I just, I went up to her and I said, I just want you to know, I think you look great. <laughs> like that's, that's an amazing yeah. dress and I'd love to know where you got it. But, mm-hmm. you know, just want you to know, I think you look fabulous. You can't imagine the look on her face, you know, a total (laughs) stranger 
talking to her in this way and, mm-hmm. and not in any creepy kind of way, just yeah. <laughs> an authentic feedback mm-hmm. about what you're doing well. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's very gratifying when mm-hmm. that happens. And I, I just advocate for anybody listening to this to try it, to mm-hmm. see what happens when you find a reason to give a total stranger some feedback. Mm-hmm. You know, even the the cashier at the supermarket to say, you know, thanks for your help today. Mm-hmm. You yep. know, a kind word can really go a very long way. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yep. I've had interactions like that because I make a point of doing that because I know it has an impact and we're just unassuming. Um, but yeah, I had an interaction with somebody I was in Alaska this summer and there was this amazing young woman who was on a whale excursion and she was so knowledgeable. I was sure she had a degree in marine biology uh-huh. or something. Yeah. And I told her, do you, do, where did you get your degree? You're just so knowledgeable and you're wonderful about telling us that she just, I think she almost passed out. <laughs> But I know in that instant, too, I gave her a lot of confidence to do whatever it is that she wanted to pursue. It seemed like there was a moment where she was like, her lack of confidence just dissipated. (laughs) So I thought she was incredible. It's important. I think the world would become a much better place if we can Mm -hmm. find authentic ways Mm -hmm. to do this more. Right. And that's women need it badly I agree. in general. I agree. And so for mom business owners who are starting out, I would love to hear what you think some of their pain points might be and how they can get ahead of, yeah. you know, being that leader of their own business, if that's the route they're going. And Because like you and I discussed, one of the scariest parts of being a business owner can be starting to, you know, have staff and and have a team. It's so scary because it's you, but it's so necessary. You have to do it at some point if you're continuing to grow. (laughs) I mean, my first assistant when I started my business was Mm -hmm. a college intern. Mm-hmm. For ten dollars an hour, you mm-hmm. don't. It doesn't have to be a high cost thing at first. But the reality is, we only get twenty four hours in a day. We mm-hmm. can only. We only have so much energy. Mm-hmm. We <laughs> have children. We want mm-hmm. to be able to be there for our families. the The pain points for women come a from guilt. Mm-hmm. We feel a lot of guilt that we're not doing enough in any arena. Mm -hmm. The other pain point is money. Mm -hmm. If we're worried, if we're preoccupied about Mm -hmm. paying the bills Mm -hmm. on a day in day out basis, you know, women are not going to put things in jeopardy. If it, if they're chill, if they, if they run the risk of not being able to feed their kids, Mm -hmm. you know? So ideally a woman has something of a cushion to rely on financially because Mm -hmm. running a business is, not an inexpensive proposition. Mm -hmm. So it's critical to have the support around you. You need Mm -hmm. to job out, to delegate the things that you're not good at, Mm -hmm. that you, that you don't like to do. You Mm -hmm. don't want to do it. I don't want to be an accountant. I don't want (laughs) to be a lawyer. Right. I don't want to do social media. I'll Mm -hmm. write it, but Mm -hmm. I don't. Jen loves that stuff. (laughs) So I, I wouldn't be able to have the life I want that I have mm-hmm. if I didn't have a team around me. Mm-hmm. For me, it's it's essential money to be spent. Mm-hmm. And of course, you need to be judicious about it. I, I think the move for women is to collaborate with other women mm-hmm. um, so that there is the, to have a backup, you know, mm-hmm. to have backup childcare. So many women are running so thin to the bone that we need to create systems with each mm-hmm. other so that, you know, my kids can come to your house and your kids can come to my house. You know, we, mm-hmm. we have a, 
a co-op or, you know, a mm-hmm. consortium. We need to find our tribe mm-hmm. and work together. Like, how can we do this to everybody's benefit? And mm-hmm. we can't mm-hmm. keep score. We're not going to keep score. <laughs> we're, but we are going to understand what we're all about. Mm-hmm. And we're going to see if we can make this work so that everybody wins here. Mm-hmm. Um, it's messy, but the good thing about women is that we're used to cleaning up messes. Yes. And we're usually very resourceful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I mean, just going into it and having somebody to be able to 10x your time that you can pay for them, essentially. And, you know, trying to leave behind that over-functioning mindset that we're also very conditioned to have, I think, as women and moms, you know. To do it all. To do it all. All of the time. We can't (laughs) have it all. We're going to burn out. We're going, our health will Mm -hmm. suffer. Mm -hmm. We, we need support. We, we can have, we can have a lot in life, but we just can't get there Mm -hmm. alone. Right. I, there's no. nobody I know. There's nobody as famous or as rich that you could think of who got there alone. Mm-hmm. They're all standing on somebody else's shoulders. Mm-hmm. Nobody gets there alone. Nobody. Right. No. And I think your book is an amazing guide to how to begin to build teams and to be a part Thank of you. a team. I think it's an incredible part of and you're building a team and you're using it so <laughs> i know as scary as it is i look forward to it because you know you can trust yourself you you can do it it's like you know it is very scary but um you know sometimes one of the scariest parts of being a business owner is success <laughs> as much as failure (laughs) so yes and hopefully you I my mantra is hire slow fire fast so you take your time hiring Mm -hmm. the right person Mm -hmm. a person who's compatible with you temperamentally Mm -hmm. who has the skills that you need Mm -hmm. and then begin you can do a Mm -hmm. trial period Mm -hmm. it's kind of like dating before you Mm -hmm. get married Well, Um, I think what's so important too is you've reiterated in your conversation, listening, it's you have to know your why and you have to know yourself. And I think that is so key because how can you lead anyone else if you can't lead yourself? (laughs) Right. And as a business owner, your question, it's a two-way street. Right. So It's important for your staff to know your why and Mm -hmm. what is it that you're trying to do Mm -hmm. here? What's your goal? But by the same token, it's important for your staff to know that you actually care about their why as well. You know, so the question is, how will this job Mm -hmm. serve you besides earning money? It, you know, Mm -hmm. there are all kinds of jobs out there. Mm -hmm. How will this job serve your life? Mm -hmm. And that's where the best partnerships happen Mm -hmm. when your staff serves you and you serve your staff. I love that. That's, that's very wise advice. That's great. And truthful. (laughs) Yes. It, it it sounds like um, that's going to lead to a great relationship. So um One of the things I'd also like to talk about is as mompreneurs, we're often starting online businesses. So, Mm. and we briefly talked about, you know, eye contact in a Zoom conference is important, but what are some of the things that you're seeing that we might also want to keep in mind as online business owners? The um, the challenge is to truly be connected to your team Mm -hmm. and and it's challenged if it's you know Mm -hmm. when I talk to CEOs I think it's advisable to be working with somebody in the same time zone Mm -hmm. like give yourself the best advantage you can have (laughs) and and to not add more obstacles Mm -hmm. in your Mm -hmm. way um it this new workplace requires even more heightened communication and Mm -hmm. clarity Mm -hmm. on answering the questions Mm -hmm. like simply simple ones like Mm -hmm. um 
I'm a morning person. So to mm-hmm. Jen, I'll say, so I want to send you emails sometimes at 5 a.m. Mm-hmm. in the morning. I do not expect an answer at 5 right. a.m. in the morning. Are you cool <laughs> with me sending them though? Mm-hmm. Are you, you know, your, your wrist watch isn't going to go off and like, you're mm-hmm. not going to be awakened, right? Mm-hmm. That's a conversation that's valuable, mm-hmm. you know, to, because we live in this 24 seven nonstop work mm-hmm. world. Mm-hmm. It's new. And so that kind of conversation as some people might think, well, that's kind of a duh or very obvious to mm-hmm. others. It's not so obvious. Right. Just, I've heard staff fretting, you know, like, oh my God, he sends an email 3 a.m. Do, do I have to answer it? Ask. Or, like, well, you know, I'm the not- Friday evening text that you're going to have another person you're taking care of. Like, not every piece of information is, should be communicated via every mode of communication. Choose yes. wisely. <laughs> And that speaks to the different ways, the different channels, you know, Mm -hmm. who's on Slack, who's on text, Mm -hmm. who's doing email, who's on Teams. Mm -hmm. We, the technology has, Mm -hmm. has gone faster than Mm -hmm. our ability to keep up with it. And not even, we haven't even talked about AI and artificial intelligence (laughs) which is changing by the day. Right. So that's when conversation needs to happen. So with you and your new assistant, I'd be advising you to agree on what kind of communication happens on email, what Mm -hmm. kind of communication is appropriate for text messaging. Mm -hmm. When do you want to talk on the phone? Is webcam always, you know, needed? Mm -hmm. Those, those are new conversations Mm -hmm. in the workplace of 2023 that were not needed in Mm -hmm. 2019, you know? Mm -hmm. So my advice for online Mm -hmm. interaction is to not assume anything is too small to discuss. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, if this is, if it's bothering your staffer, please bring it up. If it's Mm -hmm. bothering you, you know, if you set a meeting for 9 AM and a person is consistently late or, you know, if that's a problem, then Mm -hmm. it's, You know, it would really help me if you sign on to the meeting at at least three minutes to the hour. So I'm Mm -hmm. not worried that Mm -hmm. you're going to make the call. And if you are going to be late, could you text me? You know, it's an agreement. It's a negotiation. (laughs) It's Mm -hmm. what's going to make your work easier and Mm -hmm. what's going to and what does your staffer need to do the work you want her or him to do? Mm -hmm. Make sense? Right. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, I love the part in your book where you talk about expectations and communicating that. I mean, (laughs) I don't know how many times we try to be mind readers, but we're not. And it's it was hard enough in person. Mm -hmm. But now over webcam, you're only getting information from the shoulders up Mm -hmm. and, you know, for a finite period Mm -hmm. of time. And you and you have no idea what's going on behind those doors behind me. You know, right. You just don't know if your dog Mm -hmm. is sick or Mm -hmm. there's all kinds of things that could be happening. Mm -hmm. So err on the side of sharing the information so that no one is sitting there worried that, Oh, is she mad at me? Is Mm -hmm. he mad? Is he pissed Mm -hmm. off because Mm -hmm. I did blah, blah, blah. You don't make your people worry or wonder. (laughs) Do not, do not. I think that that's really great advice. And, and then to, you know, before we wrap up, I, I would love to talk about for a minute, just how important it is to make sure that we retain our employees. Mm. And then if you have any, I think we also have this, um, we tend to create in our businesses what we came from. <laughs> so if we came from a situation in, where there wasn't a lot of gender equality or there wasn't a yeah. safe zone, we tend to right. hate that. So if you could just speak for a minute about, you know, making sure that we don't recreate that situation in our businesses. Right. Yeah. Um, there's a saying that 
the universe has a way of teaching you the same lesson again and again and again until you get it. Mm -hmm. Truth is, and I believe this with every molecule in my body, is that Mm -hmm. people leave managers, not Mm -hmm. companies. Mm -hmm. And they are loyal to people, not companies. Mm -hmm. So that's why you have assistants who are with their same Mm -hmm. executive for 20 years because Mm -hmm. they are so compatible and work well together. Mm -hmm. Retention, employee retention you know, in HR speak, there's a real effort in the workplace today to hold on to the high producers, mm-hmm. to the to your high value employees. Mm-hmm. And the way to do that is to let them know that they are respected and valued mm-hmm. and they are paid properly and mm-hmm. fairly mm-hmm. and they are supported to grow mm-hmm. and keep learning. Mm-hmm. Those are the key elements to retaining staff. Mm -hmm. The converse of that is if someone is sitting there feeling disrespected, that Mm -hmm. they're, that they get their name mispronounced, that, that it doesn't seem to matter whether you're there or not. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if you're on webcam or not. If people have a sense that they're not being cared for, Mm -hmm. then there's no sense of loyalty. Mm -hmm. And, and staff, especially if they're working remotely can easily search for other jobs Mm -hmm. and think, what's the reason for me to stay here? uh, You know, one story, I think stories are so powerful in making these, uh, you know, solid examples. Mm -hmm. There is um, an assistant whose parent passed away during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And as you all recall, you know, funerals were you know, pretty tricky during Mm -hmm. the pandemic because, you know, people were afraid to gather with each other and they were being held outside. Mm -hmm. And in this situation, it was being held outside. And the assistant's CEO executive drove an hour and a half to that funeral Mm -hmm. and showed up, didn't let her know he was coming, but he came. And that act of kindness and compassion what that meant was she would have laid in front of a truck for that man Mm -hmm. right like when we feel so obviously cared for Mm -hmm. and and you know he went on and did other kind things you know in a moment when we are having the toughest day because isn't it true angela that's when we Mm -hmm. find out who our friends really are when the poop is hitting the fan Mm -hmm. right Mm-hmm. When things are going great, it's easy for people to be around you, mm-hmm. but it's when things get tough mm-hmm. that that that's when you find out who's really for you. Mm-hmm. And frankly, that's the key to retention. In the early days of the pandemic, you know, there were CEOs who just sent all the staff $300 gift cards, $500 gift cards. They were all, you know, had to go home in five minutes and create mm-hmm. home offices so the CEO would do a town hall on Zoom and say, hey, here's your here's money, no strings attached. You could buy a new lamp. You could buy a new chair. You could buy a new monitor. You could buy dinner for your family. <laughs> I don't care what you do with that money mm-hmm. other than to hopefully make your life a little easier this week. Mm-hmm. You know, actions like that mm-hmm. build loyalty, build genuine connection. Mm -hmm. So that that's what I think about retention Mm -hmm. is that people are looking for authentic leaders who don't necessarily have all the answers, Mm -hmm. but that they're being dealt with honestly. Mm -hmm. And in a, and in a transparent way so that Mm -hmm. they're not sitting at home worrying Mm -hmm. that, that at least they know the real deal. Mm -hmm. Yep. For sure. Yes. Um, well, I love that. And I could talk forever to you. I feel (laughs) like (laughs) I think you're doing such an incredible, important work that, you you know, really touches on my whole career and where I'm going. So thank you so much for that. Um, but if there was one takeaway that you wanted somebody Mm. listening to this podcast to just make sure they hang on to that sticks, what might that be? You know, it's this, that your children mm-hmm. are watching and listening 
to everything you do. Mm -hmm. Even if you think they're not paying attention, which I often (laughs) thought when my son was growing up, they are paying attention that parents in for the large most part are the most important influencers on our kids. Mm -hmm. So if we want their futures to be great, Mm -hmm. then all they want is for their parent to be honest and, Mm -hmm. and authentic. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's the lesson for me that certainly motivates me is to know that when I take action on any given day, do this Mm -hmm. podcast, that Mm -hmm. it's possible that it will impact my grandkids when Mm -hmm. they're in the workforce, Mm -hmm. that we want it to be better. We Mm -hmm. want the workplace to be better for us, Mm -hmm. but we, we for sure want it to be better for our children. Mm -hmm. And so that is the reason to put imposter syndrome aside. That's Mm -hmm. the reason to not get caught up in the stupidity of Mm -hmm dumb judgments, like, let us stay clear. My, my message is (laughs) the pandemic taught us that life can change like that. Mm -hmm. Let us be clear on our why. Mm -hmm. And every day we have a new opportunity for as long as we're breathing, there's hope. And, and I think, well, let's do it the best way we know how to do it. Knowing that those kids are going to be the staff someday. Mm -hmm. And maybe working for your company or, you know, if they're working for somebody else's company, Mm -hmm. I hope staff matters, helps them build a better company. Mm -hmm. I, I just know that the future needs to be about building cultures of respect Mm -hmm. and where staff feels genuinely valued because when they do great things can happen when they don't, that's when you have the revolving door. Right. So, you know, we can do better. We can absolutely. And we could begin right this minute. And it's yes, absolutely. And it's so important because we spend more time at work than we do at home. It's so integral to who we are and um, it's how we share our gifts with the world. Um, So I love that message. Where can listeners connect with you and learn, get your book and learn about your. Thank you, Angela. Yes. Um, my website is my name, com, mm-hmm. And the book is on Amazon in soft cover and ebook. And I'm going to be heading into the studio to record the audio book because I'm wonderful. hearing that a lot of people prefer audio books yes. these days, mm-hmm. which is fine by me. I'm excited to narrate this material. That's incredible. I love that. Um, so, you know, for those listening, I, I hope you'll check it out read it. Yes. And, you know, my fondest wish is that staff matters is a catalyst. It's a tool. Mm-hmm. It mm-hmm. will be a tool for staff to use as a, a beginning of a conversation mm-hmm. about something that needs to be discussed mm-hmm. in the workplace. Cause if you agree with me that the mm-hmm. fear is making people hold back the truth, mm-hmm. then my hope is the chapters in this book will help do the talking for you, mm-hmm. you know, bullying is an issue, mm-hmm. wage gap, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. So um, I it. want to provide you the tools to get this thing done, to make it better for our kids. I think it definitely does that. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Angela. It's been a great conversation. Thank, thank you. you for the great work you're doing. Mm-hmm. I deeply appreciate it. I appreciate that. Thank you, Bonnie. Thank you so much to Bonnie Lou Craman for being on the podcast and sharing your time with us, all of your wisdom and experience. And thank you so much for the important work you're doing for all of us now and in the future on helping to create a better workplace. So if you would like to reach out to Bonnie, I'm going to leave all of her contact information in the show notes. We would love to hear from you if you were impacted by this podcast episode, please let us know. Tag us on Instagram. Uh, Be sure to send us an email. Don't be shy. Uh, Leave us a review. You can do that wherever you listen to podcasts. Be sure to follow the podcast. It's totally free. So you don't miss an episode and share this podcast episode with anybody that you think might benefit from it. 
So we're here again another week. I am so excited for all of the wonderful guests that I have coming up. I I mean, just it just gets more incredible every week. I just can't even begin to explain it. So stay tuned. I am here cheering you on. Bonnie's cheering you on. We just have this growing collective of amazing entrepreneurs and motivational speakers and people who are just so knowledgeable and just are cheering you on. So if you're having a moment where you need that confidence, you need that support, I want you to imagine myself and all of the guests who have been on this podcast and all to come who are just really just so grateful to um, be here to support you. So thank you so much for listening. I'm so grateful for this platform and all my listeners. So I, I just really can't even put it into words. So I wish you the most fabulous week and I cannot wait to talk to you next week. Thank you so much. Bye.